Talking tunes, we're talking with the, the one and only Dave Lorenz. And how are you? Hey, I'm doing fine. It's really great to see you. I can't believe it. it's been a long time. I know, because you were, you know, you, we're going to talk about Pure Michigan, of course, but uh, you were my boss for, I don't know, how many years were you, were you my boss for? Oh, man. Uh, you know, it's funny because you were at Rock 95, right? Right. Uh, and, of course, we had WKBZ, 8.50 a.m. at the time the big uh, kind of news talker in town and yeah. then 95.3 was the fm rock station and i the port city said fm was yeah i, I remember I remember how long yeah see lonnie keach you remember lonnie keach oh sure yeah lonnie keach used to hate it because he'd be in the rock 95 <laughs> super van remember that yeah that van that we yeah had? yeah and he would say, and he'd be playing like Peter Cetera or something. <laughs> yeah. We're in front of yeah, a rock, rock concert. and roll. <laughs> yeah, we're in front of a rock concert for like yeah. Skid Row or something. But anyway, yeah. Well, compared to the WKBZ format at the time, which was nostalgia, yeah. uh, Rock 95 was really rocking it back then. We're talking the, what, the early 80s, maybe 1984 or something like that? That's what or I'm trying to it? think. It was 84, I think yeah. so, because I got here yeah. in 83. So I'm thinking. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's, it's really interesting because um i mean those radio stations were pretty good um yeah. the 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 music format on rock 95 i thought was really really good and there were some really good young people uh announcers um scott and, christmas oh uh, scott yeah scott was great scott taylor yeah uh so many other people it was just really really good times back then i you know, I, I occasionally look back at radio, and of all the radio jobs I had, and you know, like every other radio yeah. person, I had a lot of radio jobs. That time at WKBZ, where I spent almost all my time, uh, and when you know, ninety five point three was around as well. That that was really my favorite time in radio. The people yeah. that I met there and uh, got to work with, such a variety of a cast of characters that showed up. You know, radio is one of those jobs where people quite often don't stick around for a, a career or a lifetime at one station. Yeah, even today, uh, but back then it was uh, you know you were lucky to be the station for two years. You were really making it. Yeah, um, well, you know, KBZ was kind of one of my things where I kept bouncing back. So <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know that actually, you know, in a lot of ways, I thought that was a really, really good radio station. Yeah. Um, and I think over the years we just kind of got better and better. You think about um, you know the fact that. Back then, we did real news, for instance, and right. you can't find real news anymore on local radio stations. Right. Uh, maybe kind of the old rip and read, maybe somebody part time, uh, you know, reading the yesterday's newspaper or something. But those were the days that we really covered the news, right. and I spent a lot of time, even though I was, I think, program director, assistant general manager, and then general manager. Um, I spent a lot of time in the the news part of the business. Probably should have been doing more sales. <laughs> but um, it was my true love. It still is today. I still consider myself an old news guy, you know, and I can't get it out. of. It's one of those things, once it's in your blood, you can't get it out. And you see what's happened today uh, with news. It's no longer providing, you know, the various perspectives about news. Today it's advocacy news where, um, you know, a reporter feels, a so-called reporter, feels like they need to expound upon a certain, you know, a certain side of the story rather than all sides of the story it's a, it's a real concern of mine yeah. you know i don't think a democracy can really uh, thrive and survive unless you have a free and fair press and and uh, we don't have it anymore right we don't well you know that kbz was always based on its news i remember that was mm. a, a big thing news and talk especially the am especially the AM. that's right yeah the news AM and talk we had we had some really good uh people you know i think i think as early as let's see klaus helfers right santa remember klaus and his little helfers <laughs> um and he's, he was a really nice guy he, tim tim die i think followed klaus okay Tim, see, I don't remember Tim. Tim was excellent. He, I, I hired him right out of Central Michigan University. And for a guy who went to Western, that was a painful thing for me to do. But, man, it was his first full-time job. He ended up um, uh, going on to Grand Rapids. He ended up doing TV. He was okay. a, a news director and then general manager in Detroit. And now he's uh, doing consultancy work uh, uh, in Grand Rapids, and he's doing great. Met his wife at WKBZ. And they're doing well. Now, Klaus you know, Helper so always cool. wanted, wanted to go on to TV and everything, but yeah. he did, he had the face for radio. Yeah, <laughs> he had. <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you, he certainly had a, a voice for radio. That oh, booming yeah. voice, yeah. and he knew his sports. Mm -hmm. he, he was the best sports guy that I think I ran across. For maybe Jim yeah. Moyes, Gene Young doing their football. But yeah, 
Now, see, that was another thing KBZ mm. was known for. Was, yeah, sports. Boys and Young. Yeah, yeah, and and the, those two guys specifically. I mean, they they were fantastic. And and you know, uh, cash flow uh, was never a. Uh, uh, something that we had in abundance right. back there in, in those days. So Jim Moyes and Gene Young, I don't think they would turn in their their time until like the end of the season. And then all of a sudden we had to, you know, for our for us, had to send out a big check. And they was like, okay, just, you know, pay us whenever. They did football and basketball uh, play-by-play and color commentary because they loved oh, the yeah. games and they love Muskegon area sports and they've done so much with the you know Sports Hall of Fame in Muskegon and things like this. I hope they're both in it by now. I hope they are. They certainly deserve to be. Just really good guys who just loved high school sports and, and just just lived for it. See, that's what I'd love, yeah. love to give, uh, get Jim Moyes up here. and Yeah. And interview him, but I would like somebody like you or or, mm. or Bob Ecker or somebody to interview him to, you know, to really. Oh, I'd love find to do some of his stuff. Well, you know, the thing it's the hardest thing to do in radio is play by play sports. Yeah, and uh, because you have to be super smart, uh, witty, and really know the game. So I'm not any of those things. So when they <laughs> allowed me occasionally just to come in um, and just kind of sit with them like at a halftime or whatever and just talk a little bit, it was a real thrill for me to be on with those guys. Because, I mean, I love sports, but I, I don't know much about them. Yeah. And I wouldn't be able to do that at all. Yeah, they, if it, um, wasn't, it was really great. If it wasn't for Sherry Wilson, yeah, uh, yeah. I would have I never known how to run their games because it took <laughs> Two phones, three phones to run it. And it's complicated. Yeah, it was. It was a little complicated. Yeah, back yeah. In the we early had days because because we're talking. You know, when the way you would run um, local sports back then is you would have this mini mini transmitter that they would carry around. They'd set up a little antenna system and wire it up, and then they'd have this. You know, the the box there to run all the levels and the microphones and all that. Well. So they were carrying this little old mini transmitter, and then you had to be back in the station, and you had to do that. And then sometimes you had to have the telephone hooked up at the same time. Right. It just depends on what system they were using. Or another telephone to, to, to be able to talk to them, to tell them people that have called in, or have people that called in, put them on the air to talk to Jim and Gene. And yeah. it was like, yeah, yeah, it was it was quite the quite the. Uh, the setup, and I say yeah. without Sherry Wilson to explain it to me, I would have never. Uh, Sue Walters. She, she, yeah, Sue. Yeah, she Sherry was Wilson. awesome. She was a really nice lady, and I know yeah. we lost her a few years ago. Um, I was able to catch up with her just just prior to her death, actually. It was really great because, you know, you get an opportunity just to say, man, how you doing, and just yeah. see each other and um, and she was she was doing okay, and I was really saddened. We've lost too many people in oh, yeah. Muskegon area radio. Greg Borgman, for instance, right. Scott Taylor. Scott Taylor. Was, these all these was people were so important. Way in my too lives. young. Scott yeah, Taylor. they were. Uh, they were. You know, they were both just really important people to me. Yeah, losing Scott was really tough. Yeah. Scott was for us. Uh, he worked first at, at Rock ninety five, and then I remember he came to me and he said, "You know, I want to." I want to be able to go to KBZ uh, when we, we changed formats and became a little more contemporary. Mm-hmm. You know, originally, WKBZ was this really good, if you love nostalgia music, uh, radio station. And, um, and, and I love nostalgia music. Funny thing is, I was just thinking the other day, I'm going from point to point, that um, the music we played then would have been the equivalent of playing 70s music for us today. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. well, why did I think it was you know, so ancient music? Yeah. But I was young. Well, Scott ended up coming to WKBZ at a time when we were starting to be a little more contemporary. And so we had uh, Jim Cox in the morning, and we had uh, uh, Mark Brookie middays, yeah, Scott Frost, Taylor in the afternoons, yeah. and then Sue yeah. um, you know, in, in the evenings. Uh, because I thought it was so important, especially for a station that still handled news talk sports, that we still have as much uh, live content as possible. We had people running even the overnights. Today, you know, everything's just automated, and you, you don't know if somebody's really in a studio or not. It's hard to tell for the yeah. average listener, yeah. those of us who came from the business, we know. Uh, because, you know, we're giving out some secrets. But today, you you don't even have to be in the studio. You can right. record your segments. You know what the music is um, or whatever you're doing. You record them. It's it's a very, um, very slick, automated process. Well, back then, um, heck, when I started, we, we were still using turntables with three speeds. Right. I started out being an engineer for a polka show. I couldn't even tell what speed it was supposed to be on. I didn't know that music. <laughs> <laughs> and I quite often had yeah. it wrong. Yeah. For Bernie Schultz at WGHN in Grand Haven. 
Oh, really? So th- yeah. th- that's what I was going to ask you. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we kind of went around the, the wrong way mm-hmm. about it. But yeah. how, how did you get started in radio? What was your... So my in, in high school, Fruitport High School, uh, uh, I actually was flunked in speech uh, when I was, what, 10th grade, I think. And uh, and the speech instructor, Roger Scudder, lives yeah, in Fruitport Roger, today. Great, great man. Great yeah, man. Great guy. Uh, he, uh, he told me, because I had starting to get to know him as a friend, you know, even though he was a teacher, kind of a, saw him as a, like a big brother, really, still yeah. do. Um, and he, um, you know, he brought me through, helped me with theater, got me involved in the theater program and such, and kind of broke out of the, the, the box when it comes to being uh, shy and such. And, um, and, and so I thought, I'm, yeah, I did enough, you know, he's going to, he's going to pass me. Well, he did and he flunked me. <laughs> yeah, he was so tough. then, you know, in that, <laughs> that next year, cause you had to pass that, uh, part of his program was a radio program in high school, WFHS, right. number one in Fruitport because we were the only one. And, um, <laughs> and so basically through all of that, through the speech program, through theater, through the radio I did within school, I realized that, um, Kind of my my future path was going to lie in this communication field. Up until then, I wanted to be a professional artist, and uh, it changed my mind. Ended up going to Western Michigan University, worked for the communications department in one of these poor kid programs, and uh, got to learn a lot of things there. Actually, got to teach or or help teach a video program because I learned so much from, from Roger, Roger. Yeah. that I mean I was already quite advanced for college so all during this time when i graduated from high school i started working my first job part-time a couple weeks out of high school at wghn in grand haven for doug chapkis and dave murray worked with great people like dave benson and uh, jack severinson and so many of these really good people dave benson later on went to wtru where i also worked part-time on this I think AM everybody station. worked part-time at TRU well, you know what? or another. You want to talk about a great station. Yeah. That station was so popular. A- 1,600 on the AM dial, about the worst signal you could get. Yeah. And uh, and they were fantastic. And back when I was a kid, Stanley J. Wallace, uh, wake up your body, booby, you know, crazy <laughs> things that you would never, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, those, are, those were good times. Stanley gave me the best advice I ever got in radio or uh, anywhere uh, for a career path. I asked him, uh, because I was in college when I was working there in the summers and watch, and 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 then I'd work weekends. I'd drive back and forth from Kalamazoo to work at GHN and WTRU mornings and afternoons, both days on the weekends. And one day I asked uh, Stanley J. Wallace, I said, what do you, you know, what kind of advice do you have for me? And he gave me two tips. He said, uh, take it slow. Don't expect to go too fast, uh, too far. You're going to kind of burn your, yourself out. And find somebody you trust who can be your mentor when you do go on to another job. And, you know, don't try to get the big money. Look for the right people to right. work for. And you know what? I did. And I was very lucky to find people like like Doug Chapkus, for instance. Great man. Um, I, I was very lucky to work for people like... Uh, 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 let's see, Dan Thill and Bob Jewell uh, were owners of WKBZ when I was general manager there, became general manager well, Bob there. Jewell, he had it for quite some time, too. Yeah, he? yeah, both of them. And they were just really good men to work for, good people. Uh, learned a lot about business from them. Too bad I wasn't able to apply it very well for them because we never really uh, made much money, if any, at WKBZ. They were very patient with me and brought me along the way. And just about the time we were starting to make money, uh, they sold the station, understandably. And I uh, got out of radio. Yeah. And what mm-hmm. what year was that about? I think that was like 1991, 92. Okay. All something right. like that. And um, yeah, so, you know, so basically I went from GHN to KBZ to the wave. You were at the wave. Uh, 98.3, was okay. it? Yeah, it was Dave the Wave. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so it was Greg Borgman in the morning. Really, Dave yeah, the Wave? Dave the Wave, isn't that crazy? <laughs> On the wave, W-A-V-X. Uh, yeah. So it was Greg and myself. And I have to tell you, uh, 
Greg then Greg and I both went back to WKBZ together. So we worked together at uh, WKBZ, the Wave, and then back to WKBZ as a team. And I got to tell you, I, I mean, he was great. Yeah, I was marginally good enough to stay on the air, but we had a really good time. He's one of the funniest, wittiest, smartest guys I ever worked with. Huh. Um, and um, after I left, actually before I left radio, I ended up firing him. Now that I think about it. <laughs> Hard to you never fired me. That was one thing. No, I, <laughs> of course not. Yeah. Uh, well, Greg, so I loved Greg. Really good friend. One of my best friends. It was hard to, to let him go. There was a little uh, thing at the office that happened, and it was just one of those weird things. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, Greg. This wasn't one of those, the, the, the gunshot thing, was it? No, oh, no, okay. thank goodness, no. <laughs> no, this is a pretty minor thing, actually. And at, at the time, uh, actually, we talked, and he said, he said, you know, you're going to have to fire me. And I said, yeah, I am. It's yeah. okay. Well, no, no bad feelings. Yeah, he's just a really great guy. Funny thing is, he ended up going to, to Grand Rapids, back there to a bigger market. He ended up in Vegas. He was doing really well in Vegas as um, kind of the morning news guy, I believe it was, on this talker, doing really well. I was hearing great responses uh, about him, and then he ended up coming back to Grand Rapids, uh, retired, uh, and he passed away, got yeah. cancer, and passed away yeah it's a shame yeah. but um so after wavx the wave i came back to kbz and um i think that was the last station yeah it was funny thing is i know i was at um another whitehall radio station for a summer um somewhere between in my college years but i can't remember the even the call letters of that radio station oh, really? no i don't remember <laughs> it ended up being Rock 95 later on, I think. Now, you you, you mentioned a name that I forgot about, Roger Scudder. Roger Scudder. I yeah. mean, he, he taught me everything as far as video. Sure. Uh, back when I worked at TV40, you know, back I'm in not surprised. 19, whatever it was. Yeah, I forgot. He was doing a little part-time thing for yeah, fun yeah. there. <laughs> really, so. With the toaster and everything. You know, he was like the first to, to, sh to have that kind of thing. You know, Roger was one of those people um, that I think he influenced everybody that he was close to yeah. because he's just one of those people you can tell really cares. And as a teacher, uh, he was just the right person for me, for me to be able to kind of take education a little more seriously and and then to see a future. You know, I came like like so many people. Uh, uh, from a, I don't know, middle class to poor family. I don't know even how you describe us. And um, I, I can tell you as a teenager, I didn't think there'd be much future. Yeah, Didn't know what I'd do and all that. Thought I'd be an artist, just try to scrape by. And because of Roger Scudder, he really set me on this path to where I am today. I credit him for everything, really. And a lot of people can. I mean, there's, he, he yeah. did it for a lot of people. That he was. He's one board. of those people. Yeah. You know, teachers, my, I'm married to a teacher, um, and she's a tremendous person, and she's retired now, too. But, you know, uh, teachers can play such a big, important role in your life. And yeah. I was just lucky Roger was in mine. Yeah. And, you yeah, know, I still agree. is. I never see him. Same, but Yeah, uh, I never do anymore yeah. either. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Roger was. Uh, he anytime I had any questions about what I should buy, what I shouldn't buy, mm -hmm. I talked to Roger, and Roger, you know, set me straight. So, mm -hmm. not surprised. Um, going back to 1984, I guess it would be mm -hmm. um, when Neil Carney was GM there. Yeah, Neil. Uh, so Neil hired me. Let me think here. Was it Neil? So, so Neil hired you? So this is the interesting thing. So okay. um, a longtime manager at WKBZ, George, was his name George? I mean, big name in radio, and okay. I can't think of it right now because I never Bill, worked for Bill him. Bill Stevens, I know, was, nope. came over there once later, Bill, too. Bill was there a little bit when I was there, yeah. actually. Bill's a great man, too. Well, the, the longtime manager there, like in 83, 84, something like okay. that, I met him for the first time as he was walking out to retire i believe and i was walking in shook his hand said hi nice to meet you walked in to meet neil carney who he hired me after that interview and so i came in as neil's uh, program director i believe it was and then um uh, i left with greg then to go to the wave oh okay, okay. and that's when neil left yeah shortly okay. after that yeah and neil I ended up going to Cle uh to cincinnati yeah did quite well because i remember when neil left mm-hmm so, yeah, and uh, so of course that time when Neil was still around. Um, but when, when Neil yeah. left, isn't that when Tascone 
bought the station? So that was when uh, Bob, Dan, and uh, Fred Tascone bought uh, WKBZ while we were at the Wave. Okay. And then uh, WAVX went through an ownership change. I was the uh, general manager, just you know, uh, acting GM for a little while until they sold. So I worked for Dave Myers over there. Okay. Another great. I mean, think about these really good people. Oh yeah, Dave Myers. Yeah. How the heck did they end up in radio? But uh, <laughs> they did. And yeah. So Dave Myers, another really good guy, and a really smart guy as well. So a good broadcaster and. Um, um, the Wave, I thought, was a pretty good station. I forgot about The Wave. I remember The Wave. <laughs> How know? do you forget Dave The Wave? Yeah. No. <laughs> so, so the funny thing is, I, I can't even <laughs> think about fitting into this shirt now, but I still have a Dave The Wave uh, shirt. Oh, had your own shirt. Times. Wow. We had our own, yeah, Dave The Wave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was something else, WAVX. Big time. Yeah, good, good, good times over there. But... That eventually led to Greg and me going back to WKBZ. When I think I, the best times and the worst times, you know, yeah. in so many ways, uh, because just really rough times. Uh, we're talking about the time of nine uh, eleven, for for instance. Yeah. Um, let's see. I remember the. Um, I was at the I was at the wave when the Challenger blew up. I was on the air describing the launch when mm -hmm. that blew up. I just interviewed one of the astronauts uh, prior to that. Wow. Uh, so I'll never forget that. And then it wasn't 9-11. I'm getting this all mixed up. It was the the first Iraq war Okay, is when we were at WKBZ. And I have to tell you, if there's ever been a period of time that I'm most proud of, of what our team did, we had local connection coverage at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a relatively quick paced thing iraq had invaded kuwait hmm. and then we went to war with iraq and uh george bush one was president so we we did all these you know local news connections with right. people who had family there and all this stuff really good mm -hmm. um news content i thought at the time yeah, we weren't quite that good. I was at Oldies at that time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. With Dan, Dan Vandermeyer. Sure. He, he did a nice job in the morning and covered a lot of stuff. But Dan, So funny, I'd never worked with Dan Vandermeyer in radio. He was always at WMUS or, or then yeah. uh, at the Oldies station. He got out of radio and went to work for Meyer. Right. And then um, when WKBZ later on was being sold, um, I realized hey, it was time for me to go. My sales manager had applied for a job at Meyer, and she came back and she said, I learned about this job from Dan Vandermeid. She said, but you know what? It's not for me. I think it's for you. I ended up applying, getting hired to go to Meyer. Okay. So Dan and I worked together for nine years, I think it was. Never in radio, but at Meyer. Yeah, isn't that funny? Yeah. And, um, and then I actually replaced Dan at Meyer. He went to do something else. And uh, so I was a media buyer for them for a while, ended up doing other things, which led me to where I am today at Travel Michigan. Okay. You and never we'll, know. Weird, weird, circuitous path, but that's how life is. And we'll talk about Travel Michigan here, but we still got lots more to cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Radio, back to radio. Sorry. Yeah. Still on radio. Because going back to the, the task on time, that was my, my first time, my first time fired in radio. Because I was really well, sort of. Because Rock ninety five, when Tascon took over, he just he took Rock ninety five totally off the air. If you uh, remember, and oh yeah, because he brought it all to the KBZ studio, right, right. And that was all. Yeah, you know, Mike Majeski was you right. Know, doing it. And he, Mike Majeski, had just put a brand new board in there and everything. Engineer, really good guy. Yeah. Um, well, so that's when the two stations uh, mostly simulcast, right? And, and that you know, for non radio people, that's when you run the same programming on maybe two radio stations. Yeah. And you said for yeah. maybe the church programs running the yep. AM or, yep. or baseball talk or, programs or whatever it is. Yeah. And I'm wearing my Tiger baseball shirt. Today. I saw that. It's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but but then Sherry Kimball, you know, because I got let go because they didn't, they didn't have Rock ninety five along with Scott Christmas and and Scott Jeffrey. Well, you weren't fired; you were. I laid was just off. Led, yeah. I was, well, okay. It's a difference. Yeah, laid off. I guess. Yeah. Okay. So of course, the one person that I got to thank a zillion times is Sherry Kimball, mm -hmm. because she's the one that suggested I come back part time with Fred Tascone. Well, Fred didn't like me. <laughs> So I didn't last that long really? part time. Fred, so, Fred wasn't the easiest guy to work with. Yeah, well, uh, I can tell you that. But, yeah. you know, yeah. I, you know, I don't blame him. But anyway, <laughs> so then, you know, but Sherry Kimball, she must have got my job back there at KBZ, and she got me my promotion as far as program director 
I mean, she really was there for me. Yeah. So Sherry Kimball, um, you know, as the office manager, uh, I, I love Sherry. And, yeah. and, you know, that whole team, we had so many other really good staff members yeah. in the office at the time. But she kind of ran it all. She was like the yeah. radio station mom. You know, she kept us all from killing each other. Well, she was there before you. Yeah. And she was there after you, yeah. of course, and after me and after... Yeah. I, I think when GVU finally finally took it over completely is mm -hmm. when she finally left. Probably. They offered uh, her a job, but I think she said nah. <laughs> yeah, I think she went with uh, one of the school systems yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. such. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were really lucky to have that crew. You know, the thing is, um, none of us were making much money no. uh, back in those days. And, of course, that's radio. It's the story of radio. But um, we all came together to support each other. Oh, yeah. That doesn't happen in radio very often. Right. You know, the kind of the, the inside stories is uh, it always includes the on-air staff always uh, doesn't do well against the sales staff. And there's always this conflict. Yeah. You know, who's most important is usually the, the yeah, conflict. Yeah. Well, well, the Katie reality Sullivan, is... There, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, everybody's important. Right. You know, and, but but it's hard to... To, it's like a, you know trying to herd cats. You have uh, people with very you know divergent personalities. You oh, have yeah. these these extroverts and introverts, performers, and yeah. you know get it done salespeople. And uh but Sherry could bring us all together. Oh yeah, you know because yeah. she was really good at bringing people together. Yeah, if it wasn't for Sherry, I could have never done the program directing. And I was actually a program director. I actually did pick the music and yeah. all that good stuff. Back in which the day. is something you don't do anymore. There's a, nope, not, not very, much about. <laughs> not very often. No, no. You know the the neat thing was. Um, you know, we found a way to kind of make through, uh, support each other. We had a good product and uh, did a good job. But, you know, we the, the limitations of radio uh, always has something to do with the amount of power and your stick, so to speak. You know, right. how far you can throw your signal. So WKBZ, directional station, one of the oldest stations in the state, four towers. So it had this really weird pattern. Yeah. Um, and then um, the FM was just 3,000 watts, didn't right. have much play. So, you know, here we were competing with, you know, Sunny FM and WMUS, the big powerhouse, you know, with, you know, great management like Tim Achterhoff. <clears throat> it was really rough to compete. But, you know, what? we held our own and um, yeah. I'm proud of what we did. Oh yeah, well KBZ was was number one for a long time with with TRU. And, yeah, yeah. That and you know, you piece. look at those stations, those, those AM stations. How'd they do it? I don't yeah. get it, but they did because it was about programming and personalities, and it was about this very special connection that an announcer has with an audience, especially morning announcers, but really everybody. Yeah. You know, the the thing is, the the listening audience. They know us, but we don't necessarily know them. Right. So we become a very important part of their lives. You know, we're with them when they wake up, and we're with them when they go to sleep, and um, and so they get to know us. And in in especially especially back then, when we could really talk about things about ourselves, about our lives, about things that happened, uh, they got to know us all. Right. So we would have, and I'm sure you went through this as well, Oscar. Um, you know, we would do live uh, appearances here and there. And um, and then people would get to know you. I'll never forget one. I think we were at the Wave. Greg and I were at the Wave, I think. We were at the Fraunthal Theater. Uh, maybe it was the first time they did the Christmas tree thing. Okay. And uh, we were broadcasting. And this lady was up talking to us. And we had all these people. And, and she said to us, well, I thought you were the good-looking one. <laughs> and Greg and I looked at each other. And we said, do we want to know? No. Yeah. So we just leave us. So that stuff happens all the time. Oh, yeah. You hear these kind of funny um, people don't know what to say. They want to get to know you and whatever. They think you're a celebrity. And, you know, reality is we're just like everybody else. But oh, yeah. Sometimes we, they didn't know it. You know, the one thing I wanted to thank you about, but it was also Scott uh, Scott Taylor who um, who had liked my Sounds of the 70s show. You let me do that show. Mm -hmm. That was good. That was really cool. That, that was, was great. That was fun to do yeah. that. That was before the 70 station came along. Yeah. The Eagle. <laughs> and it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. here we go. Yeah. But but uh, you also let me introduce one of my favorite bands of all time, which was Three Dog Night uh -huh. at, at the, I don't know. Oh, yeah, town. sure. One of the concerts. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. The, you know, the thing is, I was really appreciative that you and Scott would, uh, li you know, I mean, you guys really liked that uh, type of stuff. Right. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm just glad you want to do it. Yeah. Um, it's good for the station, you know, that type right. of thing. And you were really into the music. Uh, Scott, oh, yeah. I remember Scott doing uh, the same type of thing with um, 
can't remember was it Sticks or Genesis or something like that. Okay. Where he went and did the kind of the opening announcing. Where I would really, I mean, I would still do things like uh, the uh, Disney or Campbell's skaters on ice or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So we'd go and we'd do the introduction, and, and so then you can kind of be backstage with them. So I got to know all those skaters, Scott Hamilton and that whole crew back then. Yeah. Uh, they invited me to go bowling one night. I remember that. You know, you, so the thing about radio is you get to meet so many cool people, uh, people, yeah. everyday people, neighbors and whatever that you would never meet except for that, to celebrities. And and you get to know a lot of celebrities. You get to meet them. Sometimes you, you become friends with them. I mean, I, I've... I've had the pleasure of talking from everybody from the president to uh, Perry Como to, I mean, you name it. Yeah. You get to know all these people or at least interact with them at one point in that very short little time. Uh, it's it's one of the best things about radio, I think. Right. And it's kind of like what I do today. The very best thing about what I do today is just like when I was in radio. I get to work with people, and I get to meet every you know so many people. Right. Um, you know they say it's all about people. Well, it really is all about people. You get to interact with so many. It's it's a real pleasure. You know, Scott, I still have uh, I still have some of the old tapes of the, some of the intros that he did for me. You know, with the put your platform shoes on and your bell bottoms and get ready for you know. Stuff See, like that. I, I can't find the tape. I used to have a tape of Scott Taylor. He uh, Back then, you know, when we would get a script to do um, to do an ad, sometimes we wouldn't pre-read it. Sometimes we'd just go cold and see yeah. how it sounds. And then we actually, those were in the days when we would <laughs> would actually run like, like records. And, and sometimes you'd have um, records that had this canned 60 seconds or 30 seconds, yeah, whatever yeah. the ad was. Sometimes you just used an instrumental, you know, song that you thought, oh, that'll sound good. Right. So Scott went into the studio and started reading this ad cold one time. I can't really even tell you some of the things that were in the ad because <laughs> it, the way you could interpret it would have been that it was a bit risque. Yeah. Um, it wasn't intended to be written that way, but the way Scott read it and the way he was interpreting it <laughs> was a classically funny thing. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever laughed as hard. I wish I had that tape. It was a hoot. Yeah. And um, and I kept that for many years. And he, he was good. He, uh, was, he, he, was, he was one just, of the best. Well, the thing is, he's genuine. That's yeah. the thing. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, people think that you, to be in radio, you've got to have these great booming voices. No, you have to be somebody who's genuine, who can interact with people, who has, who have, you know, interesting things to say. Yeah. That's how it used to be. I think to some degree it still is. With talk radio, it certainly is today. And um, and, I, and I'm comforted to know that that's still important. Yeah. Yeah, you know? I'm, um, I don't know if you know the Boatman or Chris, yeah, Chris, Chris mm -hmm. Crab, yeah. yeah, he was he was but a big influence Ludington. with with uh, yeah, he's in Ludington yeah. now, yeah, mm -hmm. K Rock, yeah, but he was a big uh, that was a big influence with him was was Scott, so mm -hmm. yeah, so Scott was a good guy. Yeah, yeah, it's hard for me even to. Th I I have I haunting dreams of Scott and Greg, you know, such close friends, right. and uh, when you lose friends too early, it's always a little rough, you know. Now Mark Frost and Mark Brookie, what do you what do you? So this is the funny thing I'd forgotten that, that he went by Frost. I yeah. don't know what I, I'm assuming Mark Brookie's his real name. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. So Mark, Mark, he writes under in Grand Haven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a Tribune. Yeah, Mark's a great guy, and we had some great times. Very good announcer. Uh, so Mark Scott and I would hang out for we hanged out we hung out for years together after I got out of radio we'd get together for coffee on Saturday mornings yeah. or whatever so it was really good to stay up with those guys and and uh, I see Mark every so often now uh, still the same quirky guy fun oh, yeah. guy yeah. Uh, smart interesting guy yeah. and um, you know we watched our kids grow up in the you know same about the same age and yeah. such so it was fun to see oh those are good times yeah I met him the first time I met him was Sunny FM back in 80 88 or something and i think like we hired him out of sunny FM, yeah you did now that yeah, i think about yeah, it yeah. yeah you know sunny fm to us was that uh you know that station that didn't play fairly and uh we didn't like him <laughs> i still to this day i've got a really sour well, taste even, in my mouth even mus didn't like him at the yeah. time well yeah. that's see that's the thing so mus was a really good competitor i felt like they played fair they were just excellent what they do and if yeah. you lost to them you'd say okay well they're really good where sunny fm i used to th i used to think okay they just cheat I don't even remember why I thought that. Maybe I was just jealous. I don't know. 
but they were a really good station. I even at the I, wave. I loved it there. I had a good time there when I was there just for a couple. <laughs> I, well, years. they were really good. I I'm in at the wave and at WKBZ. I wouldn't let the announcers say when they did the weather that it was sunny. sunny. Yeah. I said no. You're not going to say that. Yeah, you're going to say sunshine that. today. I remember that. I would not let that happen because I was so offended by yeah. them for whatever <laughs> I reason. Remember that. I don't know why. Yeah, because I, I remember when I was there. You you told me that that I so, said sunny in the weather. Was I justified or was I petty? <laughs> I guess we'll never know. So never <laughs> Maybe know. a little bit of both. both. <laughs> Another. Another person for the past, uh, Bill Heinzelman. Oh, Bill Heinzelman. Bill Heinzelman. What I don't a, know what happened to him? What a good guy. What a decent man. Um, came from the Navy. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so he taught me a lot about. He was a little bit older than me, but not much. But he taught me a lot about doing the right thing. In fact, I remember him saying, we were talking about whether to do a story. Um, and I forget what the reason why we were questioning whether to do the story. Maybe we didn't have all the right uh, back background, and maybe we didn't have it doubly confirmed. It was a pretty controversial story or something like that. And he said, you know what? It's more important to do the right thing than to do it right. I said, what? <laughs> I said, what? And then it really hit me. Um, yeah, so maybe we won't be first with this story. Maybe we'll never run the story because maybe it's not the right thing to do. All right. So, the, you know, that, that, that little thing made a difference in the way I thought about everything from that point in my life. You never know what little thing's going to um, affect you, right? So, um, at some point, I think after I left, Bill Heinzelman left WKBZ. He ended up going to Florida. Okay. He was a big fan of... Um, Oh my gosh, the uh, the great author uh, from that spent his summers in Petoskey, and I can't think of his name now. Um, but <laughs> he went down to to run the museum, and then he's you know the same author would spend all his time in Cuba and Florida and all that. Do you remember his name? I can't think of it. Uh, yeah, I know who he's talking it's, about. It's block I, I, it's block yeah. out right now. It's called age. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it gets so old. Yeah, so Bill went down there uh, to do that, and I haven't heard from him from years. Yeah, but really I was, good guy. I was kind of curious whatever yeah. happened to him because yeah. I haven't seen him. He was in that little house on uh, on the road there, right right off of Pontaluna there, and that's for right. Years and years. Yeah, I helped paint his house. I remember Bertie oh, and I went well, over there and painted the inside long, of his I'm house. Sure, it was kind of a tiny house. Yeah, it was. At least it was fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, um, uh, you got it. You got to tell me a little bit about Jim Cox. Jim Cox. So Jim, uh, really good announcer, very funny and, and interesting. Occasionally would get himself in trouble and me <laughs> for saying something he probably shouldn't have said. Uh, but I was really happy to have him work for us. He had, you know, he'd been so successful at WMUS for years. Um, ran into some issues. Ended up, you know, uh, being available. And um, you know he's such a talent. Yeah. So we brought him on board to do the the morning show, and he was great. Did a great job. And you know what? I got to know Jim was a really nice guy. Um, he was going through a complicated, difficult time in his life. Right. Uh, everybody goes through that at times, but he made it through. And um, he he was as interesting and fun as uh, you would have hoped he could have been and yeah. would have been. Yeah. He's yeah. Yeah, interesting and fun and and everything else in between. A little, yeah. little quirky and, you know, the way yeah. it is. And, yeah, it's the way, it's the way, <laughs> way it went. You know. Well, you know, I know you and I talked about Cliff Martin um, off the air. Cliff, I don't think Cliff and I ever really worked together. We brought him in, like, as a guest every so often. Okay. Just because he was such an iconic figure, still is an iconic figure in my mind. And he's still as as, as uh, witty as ever. Yeah. I'm on Facebook with him all the time. Does He likes you know. sauerkraut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's just he's just a cool guy. Um, Bill Stevens. You know, think about these names. Yeah. Bill Spaniola, WTRU. Uh, man, really good people. Yeah. One Bill Harms, we were talking about him. We didn't uh, mention. Yeah. Him. Now, did you hire Bill or no? Bill there? Bill Harms was there when I when I got to WKBZ. Which a soft spoken, yeah. gentle man, a really gentle, nice fellow. Do you have any more more things as far as your radio? What you got well, to go into? You know, we should we have to mention uh, because this was a groundbreaking person in certain ways in Muskegon radio. Um, and at the time, controversial. Richard Charles Ford. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about Richard. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, I brought uh, like Rush Limbaugh on when Rush was just starting. We, he was one of the first. Um, uh, WKBZ carried Rush Limbaugh, one of the first stations in right. the state to carry right. Rush. Well, Rush was a super conservative. People thought. Uh, well, we had Richard Charles Ford on the evenings doing the talk show. I think six to seven or seven to eight. I forget each right. evening on KBZ. 
And Richard uh, was uh, as far left as Rush was as far right. So I felt there was some balance and uh, part of the whole talk format. Well, Richard Charles Ford um, was this really smart intellectual, worked at MCC. Right. Now, you're talking about the early 80s here. Right. Uh, it's a different world today. So to think about somebody um, who was gay, who... Um, it wasn't the time to kind of announce that and to be open about it, but everybody in town who knew Richard yeah. knew that um, that was his lifestyle and who he was. Uh, but he did this talk show, and getting he would get constant criticism from, I guess I'll describe them as the far right, probably not fair to do that, just anti-people who just yeah. didn't understand that you know we should let, let people live whoever they are. They should be allowed to do that. Um, and uh, at the time... Um, it was, I mean, I, I really felt for Richard and I really wanted to keep him on the air, uh, not only because he was really good, but because it was a statement of freedom and uh, be doing the right thing. Right. Because, I mean, I would get letters and emails, you've got this person on. Yes, we do. Yeah. And he's a really good person. He was. And he's a really good uh, talk show guy. Right. Really um, such a smart guy. So he was always, you know, levels ahead of most of us. Occasionally, he'd bring bring me in to be on a show, and it was just really fun to be on a show yeah. as well. He was a really good guy, and he passed away a few years ago as well. He never had any trouble getting people to call in either. No, no, because he would stir things up. He would oh, yeah. always get people mad, yeah, yeah. and you know he did that deliberately. And it oh, was yeah. a really interesting show. Um, he was really good, but you know, I, I think about um, kind of the social. Well, Scott Taylor used to always yeah. run his show as far as... Uh, yeah, the engineer. Yeah. yeah, and Sherry would sometimes. Sherry yeah. Wilson they, they sometimes, They loved too. working with him. So. Yeah, yeah, he was a great, great person. Yeah. Well, it, 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 it seems so strange for me to think about hiring women on the air or hiring somebody who happens to be gay or hiring a minority. I was really intent. I was I really wanted to bring more African-Americans specifically into Muskegon Radio. So I was really trying to bring minorities in mm -hmm. so hiring um as many uh people who had an interest who showed an interest and seemed to have you know the talent so i i have to tell you that it seems so strange today to think that that was kind of i guess controversial at the time yeah and um so uh really worked at that and was able to bring um a, a few african-americans into radio uh in muskegon yeah and some of them went on to do some really great stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. some big time stuff. Um, same thing for some of the the radio uh, announcers who were women uh, with us. Isn't it strange to think that that was just forty years ago or whatever? Right. Which is also just, strange to think. Just forty. Years I know ago. forty years yeah. ago, which is yeah. also strange to think. It seems yeah. like yesterday to me. Yeah. But uh, today, so very commonplace. Um, to have people from all perspectives in right. broadcasting, and thank God for that. Yeah, right. There yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. So that that's a good way to end that end yeah. that note there. So as yeah. far as now, now is it Pure Michigan that you work for? Or so yeah, Pure Michigan is the brand. Okay. So I am the state travel director now. After I was at Meyer for nine years doing what I did, the then travel director George Zimmerman and I met, and uh, he ended up hiring me as his number two. And because of my quirky background in media and right. marketing and whatever it worked, so I've been there for 18 years now. I've been in, I've been at Travel Michigan longer than I was in radio. Okay, which is hard to believe. Yeah, and um, so we are the state's official tourism promotion entity. Uh, we're a division of the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, which means we're an economic development group. Right. So we don't just uh, develop and manage Pure Michigan as a brand to represent all the things that are good about the state. We also help the travel industry uh, with product development and, and a variety of other things. Tourism is a huge business in Michigan, right? In, involving hundreds of thousands of jobs. So everything we do is designed to help grow that industry, to encourage people to travel. Um, the more we travel, the more we get to understand that, yeah, we might look different, sound different, whatever, we're all the same. We all want a better life for our kids and our grandkids. Right. It's interesting that that's still an important part of who I have become is is being able to try to encourage people to get along. You know, look at what we're going through these days with all this disharmony, um, distrust, political and whatever. 
uh, man, we're better than that. And so at Travel Michigan, we spent a considerable amount of time trying to encourage people to do some travel and learn that on themselves. Sometimes you sometimes you really have to go somewhere and meet people in a different environment to realize, boy, you know, why was I concerned about this or that? I mean, right. they're just like me. Right. So, um, so Travel Michigan uh, is about economic development. It's it's about a lot of things, really. I noticed that on the website too. You got like. You can go up there and find other things to do, places mm-hmm. to stay, trip ideas, events, yeah. um, like future destinations you can go. So, I mean, Michigan, to me, is one of my favorite states anyway. Well, I've been here all my life, but yeah. it is one of my favorite states. Well, so it's interesting you say that because I've lived here all my life, too. And, um, you know, I think that, unfortunately, people who live here can't truly appreciate how great here is right. unless you've been out there and you've done some other traveling or you've worked somewhere else i can tell you because i've traveled around the world these last 18 years uh meeting with travel industry people travel operators and agencies and media to do what i do so i've been to a lot of places uh, really and every time i'm somewhere else i think look what they don't have right you know you go to a great place like london for instance beautiful city my favorite european city i think yeah it's a beautiful place i could never live here no no berlin same thing yeah Uh, anywhere in china um you know so um so we really work to encourage people to come here because there are a certain number of people who travel here for the first time for leisure and then they realize man this is a really great place look at the quality of lifestyle and the values here because everything's cheap here yeah, compared, may not realize compared, it, yeah. compared to the rest of the world, yeah. the rest of the country, even right. everything is, including our tax rate. By the way, I know people, ah, oh, high tax state. Well, look at the rest of the world. Look what you get. Yeah, for what you what you pay it might change your mind, but um, it's this is a pretty amazing place. So it's a real pleasure to be the state travel director. I've worked now for I think this is my fifth governor. Came at the end of Engler as the number two, and then became travel director during the Snyder administration. Mm-hmm. So um, it's a real pleasure to to be able to represent the state and to sell the state uh, now, on, the, on behalf of everybody. Now, name some of your favorite places in Michigan. You got oh um, well, uh, a little place on Pontalona Road. I used to always say is my favorite place where I live in Norton Shores. But the <laughs> the fact is, you know, during this whole COVID thing, I've been home all the time, like everybody else. So yeah. I'm ready to travel. Uh, you know, I would I would um, always say, you know, the the places that everybody else really loves. You know, the really popular places, Mackinac Island, Traverse City, whatever. But I'll tell you what, I'll probably surprise you with. Uh, I love Detroit. Okay. I love Detroit. I love the people. I love the places, the history, the grittiness, mm. the never give up attitude. They've been knocked down so many times, they just keep on standing up. And there's something really inspirational to me about that. And, I, and I'm not a big city guy, but I really love Detroit. Yeah, I'm a, I, I grew up in the Detroit area. Well, I guess Mount I don't Clements. remember that. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. But, so, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not a city guy either anymore, so yeah, yeah. So and I love that. Where I live, you can tell I'm not yeah, a city yeah. guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all the woods like me. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, anywhere in the UP, I'm I'm happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like a Uper wannabe. Oh, um, me too. You know, play, you go to someplace like Kitchity Kippy, uh, near Manistique, it's our biggest natural spring, and you mm. look into that water and you see the iridescent colors, and you say, "This can't be real. How is this happening?" Well, right. God made it what it is, and it's right. an awesome thing. The Native Americans actually you know, thought it was kind of like the, uh, you know, like this spiritual place. Yeah. They also felt the same way about Mackinac Island, uh, the Great Turtle, the center of the Earth. Uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, I love our Native American culture. I'm really into that. So a place like Zebuing Museum in Mount Pleasant is a really special place to me. But we also have really other really interesting Native American cultural uh, things. Um, uh, I, I, there, so my, my daughter so went, many things. My daughter went to, 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 one of my daughters went to college in, at Marquette. Oh, yeah. And so I was just going to talk about that. Yeah, so we spent a lot of time over there. And yeah, oh, what beautiful. a beautiful place. Marquette's one of these perfect towns because it's big enough that you have all the you know big box stores if you want them, but small enough to feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And great, I mean, it's a great town. I love Marquette. And it's got the university culture, so you have that liveliness and youth and just really cool people. Yeah. Keweenaw Peninsula, way out in the far 
Far West, all the way to Copper Harbor. That's a special place. Oh, all yeah. that mining history yeah. and unique, fun people. Have you ever been to uh, Lincoln Lincoln Land or Link Lincoln uh, Land? La- or? Lake and Land. Lake and Land. Uh, yeah, yeah. I never between, can say it, but yeah. yeah, right around the Munising area between Marquette yeah. and Munising. But it's a free thing to go to, and it's the most amazing thing ever. Yeah, that and, that fellow. He's an interesting guy. Yeah. He um, he works with uh, metal, and he's a welder. So he started making these huge. Um, you know, pieces of, of art and uh, started displaying them around his property. And then he ended up having so many people come over, he kind of made this driveway you can right. drive through and see it. It's actually a really popular place to watch the UP uh, 200 dog sled race. He sets up fires and oh, really? they set up food and whatever. It's, I know they it's have a stage there and everything yeah. else. And the there, dog yeah. sleds go right through there, that area. Yeah. That's a cool place. Yeah, well, cool. I could talk about the UP alone for hours. Oh yeah, because you Uperland, everything too. I mean, uh, I went to Uperland. Yeah, oh, that's that's that out. It, that's that's a fun little Ishpeming, place. Yeah, yeah Ishpeming, <laughs> the home of the um, is it the Snow Sports Hall of Fame? I think it is, because people don't know that uh, modern uh, American ski industry started in Michigan. Okay. Yeah. People don't know that stuff. So we have the museum. Plenty of so, snow up there, that's for sure. Well, the thing is, we have this four-season state where you can do something in every environment. You mm-hmm. literally have everything in this state except for you know uh, saltwater and sharks. And you can even find the sharks at Great Lakes Crossings Mall. Uh, they've got a nice SeaWorld exhibit there. <laughs> so if you really want to see them. You know, so... Um, now what about so Drummond Island? Everything. Drummond Island is a cool little place. See, we, go, we, we started going there every year for a uh, guide strip on Drummond yeah. Island. You can do some... Things you can't do anywhere else. I just guess you just talked to a guy on Drummond Island earlier today. Um, kind of the eastern part of the Upper Peninsula. Yeah. You take a little ferry to get across yeah. there, yeah. Um, and it's you feel like you've really kind of gotten almost to Canada, and you almost have. Yeah, because yeah. you have this you place. Cool. Really, yeah, really <laughs> cool place for like ORVs, um, that type of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and you're 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 kind of out there, right. you know. Small, small. I mean, we, we, we got one time we got caught, we got stuck in a, a puddle, and we there's like nobody, nobody around. So, yeah, you know. Well, somebody come along eventually. So eventually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we did get out. So yeah, yeah it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I really liked uh, the people there too. You want to talk kind of a quirky little island? Beaver Island is a quirky little island just off of Charlevoix in the western part of the northern western part of the Lower Peninsula. That's a quirky little place too. You take a ferry over there from okay. Charlevoix, and. Uh, First time I, I went there, I was asked to go there uh, <laughs> by the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> and, um, sorry, and my wife and I went over there and we brought our dog because we were going to stay there for the weekend. So we get there. I, I had arranged, I didn't know, I had arranged a rental car. So the Chamber of Commerce guy comes and he says, here's your keys to your, your place you're going to stay. It's right over there. I said, well, great. I said, well, where's the rental car office? He says, there are four cars right there. Just pick any one of them. The keys are on the dash. So that's <laughs> that's Beaver Island. Yeah, yeah. That's the experience you have. Guy later on was giving us the official tour of the island. And I'm sitting in the front seat, my wife in the back, and I'm looking for the seat belt. I couldn't find the seat belt. I said, um, you know, I, I can't find the seatbelt. He says, you don't need it here. We just agree not to run into each other. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's like, so that's the kind of place Beaver Island is. Very quirky and fun. Yeah, I mean, they'd try that. Great yeah. history, too. Yeah. It's the only place a king ever ruled in America. Okay. To so go there and learn about that. It's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, the history of Michigan itself is is pretty amazing. So, so that's the thing I think I'm most into is um, is the the history of places. And so I always recommend. We always say Tim Allen says your trip begins at Michigan.org, yeah. and we mean is do your trip planning first. And it's a good time like this year after all this COVID stuff that we've gone through. Now that we can travel. I'm saying make your bookings now. I'm trying to get everybody, make your bookings now because summer is going to be booked up. Right. Fall will uh, be the new summer in a lot of ways. Unfortunately, there's a real chance that kids won't be going to a brick and mortar school this fall, right. for a while at least. Right. So um, I think it's going to allow families to keep on traveling longer into the season. They can do their schoolwork during the day, wherever they are, wherever they are. Right. So it'll allow them to travel and then use travel as an educational opportunity too. And, and so, so many people, as far as in, in jobs, they've 
pretty yeah. much done it from home. Well, where they can bring yeah. the computer and they That's can do right. it from wherever. You, you know? know, we've all learned to live virtually, right? right? And I know I can't wait to live in reality and to be out there. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, you know, meetings, conferences, conventions, huge for Michigan, especially in Detroit. Grand Rapids are big cities. So we put all these protocols together to allow for safe environments uh, to have, have meetings. And I can tell you that all the meetings I'm on on Zoom or Skype or whatever, in every case, people... There's somebody, if not me, somebody who says, this is okay for now, but I can't wait to get to the point where we can see each other in real yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. You know? Being a travel Michigan is a real pleasure to be able to work for the people of Michigan. I work for all of you, and uh, it's, it's a real honor. Um, but we started talking today about radio. Um, uh, one thing I usually tell kids, young people, when I talk to them in college, I get to do that. It's my favorite thing to do, is you know, don't allow your thoughts of where you're going to go to direct your path. Sometimes you have to, even you might think you want to do this for your career, for your life, but sometimes this opportunity might come up that's a little bit off that path. Take that, that road less traveled. Sometimes, if you feel like you've got the right mentor, it's a good opportunity. Uh, I never, ever thought I'd be doing what I'm doing today. I thought for the longest time as a teenager, I'd be a professional artist. Not very good at it, so I'm glad I didn't do that. Um, <laughs> then I thought I'd be in radio the rest of my life. Right. But look where I am today. You never know. So, um, But it's because of the people we talked about earlier and the opportunities. Everybody from Roger Scudder to all these radio people we talked about that basically that's why I am, I am where I am today. And right. I'm very appreciative for that. Yeah. I never made a whole lot of money in radio, but I made a million dollars in memories. Mm -hmm. Got so, that. Yeah. So. And the funny thing is, that's what I'm doing today, is helping to create memories in a different way. So yeah. it's, it's fun to be able to still do that. All right. Well, Dave, thank you so much for coming over. I really appreciate it. I really looked forward to this interview. So I, I look forward to seeing you again. It's really good to see you. Now, didn't we see each other like yearly at uh, like, uh, was it the Fruitport uh, Old Fashioned Days Parade yeah, or something? Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I always, yeah. Did, I always did the video for TV 40 yeah. or something. So yes. we managed well, to see each other once a year. And that'll be back next year. So we'll see good. you there. Good. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.